Hey guys, unfortunately it's me again and today I'm going to show you how you can transport an ordinary scene like this and give it a couple of cool extensions such as not only make it a little bit more pixelated which is a cool effect on its own if you want to have a more pixelated look to it and make it black and white but also work with distance field which in addition is a very cool look that you can pair with pixelation and even you play around with the sliders that we are creating. You'll be able to add light sources to your distance field or disable the light sources in order to give you this insanely cool look. As always, this complete shader setup minus the background. I'm not allowed to sell you the background since I bought it myself and I can't re resell it. But this shader setup that we're going to go over in a second is available on my Patreon. Uh, if you look at other shader setups on my YouTube channel, you can find all of them there as well. You can download all of them for five bucks or like whatever my subscription cost is right now. But if you want, don't want to sit through it, head over there, download all of this and maybe the other ones as well. Okay, before we start, again, here is my pitch, subscribe and like if you want to, leave me a comment. Here's my Patreon, website and everything else. Thank you very much and we are good to go with our tutorial. For everybody who knows what they're doing right now, we are going to go over it in 30 seconds and then we're gonna go in detail. So screen position, multiply floor and all of this for pixelating the whole scene. Up there, we are only desaturating everything because we wanna have the light input. The light input cannot be got caught with our scene depth. So this up here is only useful for gathering light information that we're going to add in later to our scene. Right now we have our scene depth, which is going to make everything black and white according to a distance that you set in here, clamping it to zero or one. And we have an additional scene depth uh, just for being able to make a mask. This is what we're going to do over here. And in the end, I'm just going to give a couple of options because this scene depth is one option in my opinion and then having details with lighting is another option and for us to be able to switch faster back and forth i just added a couple of lerps linear interpolations so we can actually use those sliders to go back and forth details and mode a and b okay and now let's do it again slowly first of all what you want to do you want to create a post-processing volume so you could just go to place actors post processing volume you drag and drop it in there and then you go here and select unbound right now unbound is always visible uh, if you put it on unbound it's only visible inside this cube which is which can be cool as well but unbound makes it visible everywhere which is kind of cool second thing we want we want to do is actually make things pixelated this is done by getting a screen position, a screen position node, multiplying it, flooring it, and dividing it. This is something that you have to, that you have to learn. It is just taking pixel information and comparing it against itself, and that is going to happen across your screen about 250 times or 500 times. This is a slider that you can set. I usually do right click, and then there is a. I usually go with right click, promote the parameter, and then I can make an, an instance out of it. So this is how I set my values. You can hard code it into material if you want to, but usually that is fine enough pixelation. So if you can see that if I change this value, it is getting more pixelated or less pixelated. If I go to 62, 50, it's a lot pixel, more pixelated. If I go to 500, it's barely noticeable. If I go to, I set it to minimum 50, but it's fine. 250. You want to plug that into a scene texture, scene texture and post processing. Oh, scene color is going to come up. You click here, post process input, post process input zero is the one that is going to work with most of the stuff that you plug into the UV input. If you get it, plug it into the UV input and an emissive color, you are good. This is your pixelation effect done. That's, that's it. That's literally it. And now we have a dithered and pixelated scene that we can work with. So this is our baseline. This is our pixelation. 
Let's focus on the upper part because the lower part is actually just an add-on to make to make a nice mask to it. But the upper one is more important. If you plug in the pixelation into scene depth, the scene depth actually looks like what you expect. It's a black and white mask that will calculate the scene depth. The further you are away from any object, the, the wider white it gets, the closer you are, the blacker it is. Yes, you can change that value and like the, the steepness of the blackness by dividing it with a, I don't know, another parameter. In this case, I just went with multiples of powers of two. So uh, 8K, 16K is the maximum. You can go down to uh, 512, which is very close. So you have to go very close in order to get really black. I thought that uh, 8,000, 96 is a good value for what I want to achieve. So this is what's going to happen here. We go a step further. This node is called clamp. And what it actually does is making sure that the nodes that you, the values that coming out of scene depth and dividing and distance are between zero, which is black and one, which is white. That's the whole purpose of this, of this little setup. It's not doing anything else. It's just zero and and one why i choose to make it a parameter is that sometimes you want you don't want the black to be black maybe you want the black to be more gray 0.3 but in most cases it's going to be black and that's actually done for if you just want to have this cool effect over here if you go to your post processing volume and you drag and drop this into post process materials array one this is what we have so far so we are already good to go on this on this front actually. You can see if I now decide to change the value in here to 2048, the fog is much brighter and much closer. If I say, if I go all the way up to 16K, stuff that is closer to me is going to be black and it's just a much more gradient background. By the way, if you want to have the exact opposite effect, you can put a minus one minus behind it, and it's a black, it's a white and black mask instead of a black and white mask. Sometimes it's a cool effect, depends on if you want it or not. So this is actually the first shader done. We have uh, a lot of things that we can control, right? The clamping, the distance, how, how steep it is and how much pixelated it is. That's already everything we can do. What have we got up here? I'm going to drag and drop it up here. We are, again, putting our pixelation into a post-process input zero and we're going to desaturate it. That means we got a black and white, somewhat black and white image of our pixelated scene. That's what's going to look. And I think this alone is a sick look. I like this very much. I want the, I want the option to have a hybrid between those two options, which means I will separate on lightness value because we can crank up the light of this lamp. And according to this, I want to be able to get shadows, lights and everything into my black and white mask. So what am I going to do? And this might be a little bit more of a complicated setup. I'm going to crank that in here and apply. We are comparing. We are comparing our desaturated input on A with our threshold. That's going to be in B. The threshold is 0 0.5. Uh, the higher the value it is, the higher the value of the lightness of the input A is going to be compared to. And now we have three conditions. It's comparing the lightness values, right? White to white, black to black and everything in between. If a pixel in A, our desaturated image is lighter than B, 0 0.5, it is going to display our desaturated image. If it is equal or darker than 0.5, I said it's going to display our scene, but made it darker by multiplication, which means the lower this number is, if you, you know, multiply by zero, it's completely black. But if you multiply by 0.1 or something, it's just 
very, very dark, but not completely black. So we are comparing against this value. Everything that is brighter than 0 0.5, one is the maximum, zero is the minimum. Everything that is brighter than 0 0.5 is going to be displayed as our desaturated value. Everything that is darker will be displayed as our very much darkened image. You can see that if I give this a 0 0.1, for instance, then our blacks are going to be very, very, very dark. If I give this a 0 0.8, which I wouldn't, our blacks are basically just shadow information because our blacks are now higher than the threshold. So you have to at least keep it below the threshold. That's what I would suggest. If you crank up the threshold to a 0 0.8, then obviously a lot more is going to be black and only the really, really highlights are going to be white. I thought 0 0.5 to be a good middle ground. And that's actually all there is to it. Now, if you want to see this as a mask, all it is is essentially a black or white mask. We can then again add those together, our, our initial black and white footage and uh, distance field footage and add it together to get one of those cool effects. And then we're done. As like legit, then we are done. All I did down here is just two methods of making it accessible via an instance, a material instance. So if I put that lerp into there, oh, if I put that lerp into there, one of them is just lerping between the pure output without light and the impure input with the light. It's basically the same, same inputs, but I can just lerp between these two values, zeros and one in between doesn't really make any sense. And the same goes for, for this one. So we have a, our unedited footage, and this is essentially uh, what, what we did. If I give my post-process material our instance, which makes it a little bit easier to check against, there you go. We can now see everything we want. De details, for instance, if we want to change between those two modes, and brightness threshold, if you want to have it more bright, darkness, if you want, it has control over the shadows, distance is controlling the distance, and pixelation is controlling the pixelation. And that's it. That's it, we are good to go. Again, I'm going to upload this to my Patreon, if you want to have it, there you have it, as well as every other shader that I have on my YouTube channel. These are still usable, Right, so they are uh, Unreal Engine 5.0, but still work perfectly fine. And everything else is cool. Perfect. I hope this was somewhat educational to you or useful to you. I haven't done the shader in a couple of years. So let me know how it, how it went. If you need anything else, here are my details, website, Patreon, everything else. Leave a comment down below and tell me how I did. And everything else you will see in the next video. Thank you very much and goodbye.